on. But now I'm super pumped. We're going to be bringing on James Berth- Berthody. I-, I think I pronounced that correct. James Berthody. Hey, James. And James is going to be dropping us scaling dev sec ops to your business. James, you ready to rock and roll? I sure am. I don't know if I can keep up that energy level you've brought, but I'll uh, do my best. Oh no, you're going to be good. I'm just, I'm a maniac is what it is. That's it's not, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. All right, guys, be good. Enjoy James's talk and I'll be here producing if you need me. Thanks, James. Thanks. Um, so hey, everybody, uh, my name's James. I'm super grateful to be here today and feel free to chime in in the chat uh, at any point along the way, I'll try to answer. And really just to piggyback, uh, my my start on LinkedIn was exactly what you just heard to do. I started posting as sort of like a half joke with my friends and then just consistently posting over time and saying yes to every single opportunity I had was definitely uh, the secret to building what little following that I have. And so definitely take advantage of the networking and just saying yes and being super consistent. We definitely get this idea in our head that like when we make this post, it's going to be perfect and we're going to blow up and it's going to hit thousands and thousands of people. And some of my most successful kind of put out um, to have just totally out since the pager do months and before that the big about the I have with me on LinkedIn. Tell you about right first. Things that someone could answer this question. Can be hard to understand a large scale. Headphones, but through started coming out came about. And so that's a true. Misconfigured. Itself. And so, and so, how do we
stop instead of I want to just give an idea. Right, this is where they're so this is why. and then trying to figure out the fundamental Here about Uh, did that help it in any way? Um, let me know. Uh, one second. Let's see. Audio track one is frozen. Ticker's moving. Jerry's frozen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is terrible. Let me uh, see what's up. We're going we're gonna to lose more people, I would imagine. All right. 
so let me just tell everybody that right now you can go over to track two. I, I, I normally, w I wouldn't say this cause I'm, I'm so like pro track one, but track two, you can go over there right now. There is a link in the uh, pinned comment on YouTube right now that you can go to. I'll, I'll uh, do it this way. There's simply cyber cafe. If you're interested in doing that while we're doing that, let me, um, you're back. Okay. So let me, let me ask you, I can't refresh the page, Rob. Uh, I appreciate that, but it could screw up the entire stream. All right. So Jay fish says it's good to go now. All right. All right. Well, let's, let's do this. Okay. I I'm really pumped about this. We're going to try to bring James back on. Okay. And we're going to see what happened. Maybe James is the problem. I hope it's not James, but let me bring it in. All right, let's bring it in. Here we go. James, you're back on with us. I'm back. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and share your slides. We've been streaming all day and it hasn't been an issue. Yep, and I'll, uh, I'll keep just talking here for a minute to let people know the feedback of if it is me or not. Uh, I am at an Airbnb. <laughs> and so this could be, uh, could, I'm very open to it being me. Uh, but it looks like everything's good. So cool. Um, well, that was an exciting way to get started here. Uh, let me go ahead and hop right back in, okay? Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna back up just a little bit because I know there were all those issues there. And so, really, uh, I saw the the comment of uh, what is DevSecOps, and we are excited to learn about it. And so I was trying to just give the history of how this thing happened. And essentially, it was just we we were giving a ton of alerts. Um, to the wrong people. And so, a lot of people in this chat are security operations people that work. Like that, and they are like, um, uh, we are seeing started that wasn't supposed to. Be Um, server or encryption. Uh, the you're in running in privilege. Can it be? You're getting this. at all uh, alerts to the Can get an idea of feedback as they're connection or something. Created a tool. We're doing security as the way that a lot of people that pain that I went.
to do is this part and you trying to keep up with the You want Okay. All right. Well, then that's fine. If there's my kid, I made him wear a mask on in the background, um, so we cannot uh, have any, uh, you know, anything identifiable uh, released in here. That's definitely a Fortnite mask. Guys, what's up? I want to say holler at you. So right now we should be meeting with James Berthodi. Unfortunately, due to some network issues, uh, sadly. Um, we had to pivot a little bit. So we've got a couple of minutes. It's really too bad too, because James had like amazing information to share with all of us. And um, I, I, for one, was loving it. I know many of you in chat were also um, loving it. Let me see. People are saying that I'm having issues. Can't hear you if you're trying to talk. Black screen, no feed. Oh my God. What is going on, bro? I'm going to try to... No, I can't refresh. That would be like insane. That would be insane. Um, complete, complete failure. All right, hold on one second. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right, so let me ask everybody that gave it a second here. Um, let me know if you can see me. Grayson, if you're going to be on, you have to put the mask. Are you serious? All right, if that's what they said. All right, I got you. I got you. You don't have to show. All right, so stay as is. We got the mods coming in here. Justin Gold, five by five. We got my oldest seed uh, in the background there. James. Did you run the speed test? Oh, I saw you on screen, but then I didn't. Thumbs up, thumbs down. How was your speed test, James? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I can't. Uh, all right, hold on one second. Let's bring James on. Thumbs up. Yeah, I mean, um, I switched over to, to tethering, so I don't know if that's, I, yeah. I, all right. I just well, wanna... We can certainly try it. You do have uh, eight minutes left if you'd like to give it a, a rip. Um, you want to try that? Sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. In chat, let us know. We'll run one more time headlong into this talk and we will get it going. So uh, let me know if you're going to share your slides. I'll pull them up. Yep. Oh my God, Nick Parker, you're so 
the best. All right, there's James. I'm going to go off and uh, let us know in chat if it uh, gets choppy. Yes, and if it is, I will accept responsibility on my end and uh, and apologize and bow out <laughs> from doing that. Um, so let's keep going here in terms of what to do before we do DevSecOps. The 10,000 mile overview of what we've been talking about is that uh, the, the fundamental issue that we have is that we can, and I'm seeing stuff about the slides and I'll. Uh, Actually, yeah, we'll so they're asking if they can share the slides that way. Um you could you know you could just be talking about it and it's like one less thing to share so yep. we do, we do have the slides i can make those available uh give me one second if you're okay with that james yep yeah yeah all right all here we go good. i'm going to share these uh slides with everybody right now uh share slides uh anyone with this link does not get to be an editor they get to be a viewer doink doink all right chat get ready coming in hot James's slides. This, if you have any you complaints, just connect with me on a LinkedIn and you can yell at my wife's cousin for getting married here in Florida and causing us to, uh, <laughs> to come on down uh, from Raleigh. Really and so that's, yes, and so it's all uh, it's all her fault if there are, continue to be issues. So really, I, the thing that I just want to get across at a high level with all of these slides that we've been talking about um, that you may or may not have heard a lot of it is that we can stumble into these issues with uh, with trying to do DevSecOps and look for tools before we start trying to start trying to solve business problems. And it's important to recognize that the amount of things you can scan and the amount of security that you can implement at each piece of your pipeline along the way is uh, really at a high level a, a ton of different tools that are available that fix very specific problems because a lot of these problems are for large enterprises that have huge security teams that are trying to do a ton of different stuff with a ton of different uh, people and resources that you might not have access to. And so those different, uh, if you try to approach this problem as a problem of tools and trying to just buy the right tools, that's where you're gonna end up coming into a lot of different issues. And so, on the slides, going through different prerequisites that fundamentally just come down to knowing uh, knowing both what level of security your business wants. And so it's important as security professionals, we can want to be very uptight about the level of security that we're trying to pursue and gravitate to. We're always going to want more security instead of less security. And so it's important that we can be realistic about what we're trying to accomplish. Does our business want to have a extreme security posture? What kind of data are we handling? Is it, is it extremely sensitive? Or is it something where if there was some sort of breach, it would have very low financial uh, costs to the business? And so a lot of times we have to try to be very realistic about what we're scaling. And the, the best advice I have when it comes to getting funding is to really tie uh, explicitly the organization to a specific framework that you're going to try to achieve and tie yourself to. And where that's helpful, there's a lot of great frameworks out there, whether it's your SOC 2 stuff, which is more common or NIST standards. Um, but beyond that, if you want to tie to OWASP DevSecOps standards, the Kubernetes top 10, the OWASP top 10, the software assurance model, uh, the SAM model, there are a uh, software assurance maturity model. Um, there are a lot of different ways where if you can tie and say, as a business, every quarter over quarter, we want to be improving our security posture against these scores, that really makes it so much flexibility to unlock funding to pursue the next thing to increase your security posture. Because those models will include things that, if you had to argue for something like a DAS scanner, which is a dynamic scanner from the outside of, uh, of, of your environment to the inside, uh, trying to get that specific application funded is going to be really hard on your own because you have to try to show like here's the value versus the gaps and what's not coming in versus what does get it does come in and really that's where um if you are able to argue hey we are committed to this specific model then we have automatic uh 
funding essentially to get each piece of this puzzle funded as we're going along. And so that's that's part of it is just having step one of really going on this DevSecOps journey is just being really realistic about what your outcomes are and making sure that you're funding in accordance with those outcomes. And the second piece is that you are not going to be able to get this done without relationships and buy-in from across the entire organization. And so a lot of times we can try to buy tools to solve people problems when those problems are not going to go away. If your developers are already feeling overwhelmed and crushed because they have like product milestones they can't hit, um, they're drowning in a million different requirements from different groups, you coming in and saying, hey, guess what? I bought this new security scanner that now you're gonna have 200 extra alerts to deal with every week. Um, congratulations, here's all these vulnerabilities. You are not going to be able to accomplish anything if you take that kind of approach. What you need to do beforehand, and this is something that I tell every security person, every security team I meet with, is that developers are not going to respect you or listen to you until you have successfully pushed a commit through to production. And so that means that your security team needs to, uh, it can be really, really hard. And so I wanna start with, with that knowledge of, if you have a traditional security background, that's very focused on security operations. And so you're used to triaging alerts from your SIM or you're used to um, managing SIMs or EDR platforms, antivirus type stuff. It's gonna be really intimidating for you to suddenly install VS code, get set up with Git and getting into the different workflows and setting up local development environments. Um, but honestly, you going through this process is going to be the secret to understanding uh, the, what the developers are going through. And that way, when you come in with a new tool, you already have relationships and saying, hey, when I talked to you earlier and we tried to start um, getting things working, uh, when we were troubleshooting my local application, I thought it would be great if we could implement this security scanner at this piece of the workflow. And then you have this relationship to build the process around where you're sending those alerts to the developers as early as possible and you're working together with them to remediate things and you have an actual buy-in and an understanding of what they're going through. And so this is like the number one piece of success to implementing DevSecOps is to have that relationship as you go into it so that as you get these alerts, you can then work through some different ones. And so just, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions because I know I'm already down to a minute on time and hopefully the slides have a little bit more information as far as then what tools can we get once we have these relationships and processes in place to go ahead and implement those. So for DevSecOps frameworks, um, the ones that can be assessed and certified, this is where you really have to have a feel for, um, there's a lot of elasticity within compliance frameworks. And so uh, you, you actually have a lot of flexibility if you take a proactive stance in terms of stretching your SOC 2 certification because a SOC 2 certification just says, for example, you have to do some kind of vulnerability scanning. And so you as an org have an opportunity to build out what your vulnerability remediation policy is going to be, and then which of those pieces are you're going to include in your vulnerability program. You might only scan container images. You might only scan host-based operating systems. You might only do dynamic application testing. But that is where you can spell out what you're going to do and then every time the SOC 2 comes about, that's your trigger to talk to leadership and say, hey, I'm worried we're going to miss our SOC 2 goal because we never implemented DAST the way that we thought we would, for example. And so you can, you have the opportunity to leverage SOC 2. But as far as the, the overarching frameworks, I've had a lot of success for, personally with both the OWASP SAM and the DSOM, which is the DevSecOps maturity model and doing quarter over quarter scorings on all of those, those uh, areas that they spell out, and then showing the executive team, hey, we are making you know, 0.25 uh, quarter over quarter progress in each of these uh, areas, and that's how we can unlock the funding and moving forward on it. Um, so yes, it is a, really what I wanna just get across is that this is a tool plus process plus people problem. And if you just try to find the tool, um, you're going to miss uh, the important details to really get instrumented properly along the way. All right. So even despite a couple uh, technical challenges, we, we saw it through. James, thank you so very much for your time. If you have a couple minutes, James, I know you're at your uh, the wedding 
in an Airbnb and there's a lot of complexity involved. If you have time, uh, I know a couple of people had questions. If you could go over to the Discord server and just field a couple questions. Guys, if you have questions for James regarding DevSecOps uh, and how to do it correctly, and you know we have his slides now, um, go over to the Discord server and engage with him. Thank you so much, James. Uh, very much. I appreciate it. And, and I apologize for the technical difficulties. Oh, I know. I apologize too. We'll never know whose fault it was. So we can both <laughs> just uh, fall on the sword for that. So All thank right. you well, guys. Very, yeah, of course. Very